Uh, my name is uh, Reverend Kenan Glenn Lockery, a Radjuri man, and my task today is to unpack for you briefly the statement from the heart. But before we do that, I would like to acknowledge the country on which we are doing this video today, the country of the continuing custodians of the land, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. We acknowledge their elders who have faithfully cared for and continue to care for and will always care for this space. The Statement of the Heart is a vital document. It was developed over a 12 month period in 2017 through consultations with 1200 First Peoples in various locations around Australia. And the questions that were asked was in response to the request by the government at the time for a pathway towards constitutional reform. In this process, the, the people decided that the, there were four key elements to do in, that, in order to bring about appropriate constitutional change that was going to be effective, not just for First Peoples, but also for those who came later. Perhaps we could call them Second Peoples. The four key elements in the Statement of the Heart have to do with voice, treaty, truth, and makarata. And these are the process in which it is to be taken. This is not a linear process. It's not a process that begins with one and ends with the other. This is not a process about recon reconciliation. This is a process about justice. And it begins with the idea that if you're not seen and you're not heard, you don't exist. If you're not heard, you're invisible. If you're invisible, there is no one to talk to. So right at the very beginning of this process was the idea of embedded in, embedding in the Australian constitution a voice for First Peoples, a voice in the constitution which would allow our sovereignty to sit alongside of the sovereignty of the Crown. It would shift our sovereignty from being outside and of no consequences to the rest of the, the country to having a voice and the capacity to speak about things that matter to us. This is about recognition. This is about the idea that we now recognize that in this space, there are more than just one people. There are many peoples and they have voices that need to be heard. And those many peoples make up the people who were here first and who have never ceded this country and never given up their sovereignty because the land was stolen and not negotiated through a treaty from the very beginning. But once you have recognition, you then need to find a way to move forward. If you know there is somebody there that wasn't in your mind there before, then you have to come to an agreement about how to move the process on. That agreement is very simply a treaty. We say we both exist, we say we are both here, and how are we going to manage that process? Are we going to agree that we need to move forward? Are we are going to agree that we have to listen to each other and come to a space of acceptance that we are both in this place. That's conciliation. And in the Australian scene, we have never been able to do that previously. We have never been together as one. So we do that process of coming together after hearing each other and recognizing each other, coming together to get a process of agreement of being in this space together. And that process, as I said, is about conciliation. And that is where we can begin the process towards reconciliation, which is the third step in this circular movement. We move to this circular movement because for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, circles are important. You stand in the middle of your country because your country is from horizon to horizon. So you're responsible for everything in that space. 
So this motion around this circle is very important. It's about wholeness, about connecting to one another, about giving life. So we've gone from voice to treaty and now we come to truth. Truth is when both sides speak about what it's like to be in this place, what it's like for each of them. It is not simply about talking, having the non the indigenous people talk about their story. We have to hear the non-indigenous people's story. We have to hear how the trauma of the genocide and invasion affects both sides. What is our feelings about this? It is not truth-telling if all you hear is one side of the story. It must involve both sides of the story. And this is what we call reconciliation. In this process, we start to come together because we start to value each other as a human being. We start to see each other as more than simply a non-existent, a non-recognised, marginalised person. We start to see ourselves as more than the other. That's reconciliation. Once we've done reconciliation and we've accepted that story, the truth in the truth telling, we then have to find a way to put that truth right, to fix that truth, to move that truth into action that brings about justice for all, not just justice for Aboriginal people or Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, but justice for all in this country. And in that place, the word that has been used is makarata, which in its original meaning talks about coming together after a dispute, coming together after conflict. But it's not a process of coming together without consequences. In the original kind of space that word would have been used, it would have been used about the time after a conflict between peoples where there may have been for the protagonist in that situation, a spearing, a spear in the thigh. And that person would have remembered that whole situation and the consequences, and so would of the community that was watching on, and he, he or she would have walked differently as a result. Their behavior would have changed as a result of the consequences of facing voice, treaty, truth, and makarata. For those who un may be interested in the, um, the Old Testament story of Jacob at Peniel, where he battles with God overnight, gets up in the morning and his hip is dislocated. He walks with a limp. The process of the statement of the heart is about getting to that stage where those who need to make changes walk with a limp. In reality, it would be that for the, the, the Australian society would walk with a limp, would act differently towards the first peoples of this country, would act differently in, in doing things like reparation, in things like the processes to include and to value other lives. The statement of heart is a restorative justice process. It's a powerful process that allows us to mean move from a not seeing to justice. It takes time, it's not quick, it takes a lot of work, but it is a powerful tool to change our country and I believe other countries as well. Thank you.